Welcome back to The Band Guide. I'm your band guy, Colin. And today I wanna to show you how to create a submix in Logic. Now, there's a lot of reasons why you might do this, or at least a handful of reasons why you might do this, but there's really one that we're gonna focus on today. And that's because when we are using a reference track inside our session, so for example, let's say you pull in one of your favorite mixes from one of your favorite bands into your session, or let's say you're working on a project and you wanna make sure like an album or an EP, or just a single after another single, and you wanna make sure that the song that you're currently mixing sounds similar enough to your previous release or the last song that you worked on, creating a submix allows you to bring it into the session without it hitting your master track processing. So let's look in a session here and you'll, I'll be able to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here I have my song laid out and this is the song that we're currently working on all up through here. And I've brought in the last song that we released down here at the bottom. And if I play this song right now, it's currently gonna go through all the master track processing that I've done on my full mix. Master track processing is a great way to really enhance your mix very quickly uh, and kind of glue it all together so it sounds like one cohesive mix as opposed to uh, you know, just a bunch of jumbled tracks. This helps kind of glue it together and give you kind of a jump start to your mix in terms of tone and dynamic and all that stuff. So master track processing is a really important part of the mixing process, at least in my opinion and a lot of pros opinions as well. And the problem right now is if I were to listen to this mix, doesn't seem bad initially, but as soon as I pulled it in, I would notice that it's different than the way I remember it sounding when I finished mixing it. And that's because it's going through all of this processing that's not on that actual mix. It's running through the processing that I'm trying to put on the new mix that I'm working on. So if I turn all this off here, it's gonna sound very different. Turn it all back on. And it almost sounds more exciting, kind of cooler, because it's getting an extra layer of processing on it. But I don't feel like it really needs that, and it's changing the way that I'm hearing that mix, which is working against the whole goal. I'm trying to reference this mix to make sure that it works in the context of the mix. So what we need to do is create a submix, and this is basically a point that's going to intercept our song before it hits the master out or stereo out, master track two bus, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so right now, the way it's all working together is we have our full song and we have our reference track, and they're all just running to the master track in one place. What we can do is create a submix where our new song that we're mixing hits the submix before going to that master track, and then we route the reference track as it's currently routed to that master output, and that submix becomes our master track or our two bus where we do that processing. That way, nothing's happening on the actual master track, so all our reference tracks can run through that clean, and our mix can hit the submix, then the master track, and it basically just opens up that opportunity for us. So to set this up, what we need to do is look at our mixes here in this view because we need to see our outputs here. And all we need to do to set up a submix is to select all of our tracks. Now in this case, I'm using track stacks and if you're using track stacks, you wanna be sure to close them so you don't mess up the routing on the track stacks. For example, these E drums right here are running into bus 34. That's hitting this folder or track stack up here, bus 34. I don't wanna change that because I want that to keep going through this folder or track stack. So I'm gonna close that and then when I select this track, it's not going to select all those tracks that are inside of it. That's important. You wanna make sure that you don't do that. But if you do have any random tracks that are not in track stacks, like these synths here for me are not in track stacks, then you can keep them out. Obviously, you don't need to put them in a track stack for this to work. So close any folders or track stacks if you have them, then select all of your tracks. So just click the first track, go all the way over to the right and select the last track while holding shift on the keyboard that will select all of them at once. And then if you hold command on the keyboard, you can deselect your reference track. So for example, I was just about to throw that in there, but be sure to include your effects. Otherwise they won't get sent to the master track. So now that we've selected everything, we can click on any one of these under here where it says output and just select buses. Any bus will do. I always set my submix to bus 32, and that creates now this new aux channel for us here. We'll retitle this submix. And now we see the input here is bus 32. If I were to play this as is currently, In the water you drinking, big is we see that the song is going through here. If I were to mute this, we don't hear anything because we're muting functionally the master track but all of my processing is still over here on this master track. So if I wanna move that over, I could copy channel strip settings and then go over to this track, paste, plugins only is all I need to paste. And that will paste everything from that master track setting. And I can go ahead and here and remove all effect plugins and that will get rid of all that. And that gives me 
everything on this now submix and I'll hear it. But now if I solo my reference track, it's not hitting this submix because I didn't change the output of this to that new bus that we created and it's just running through over to this master track. So we can now quickly just flip back and forth between these two songs. Right, and I can just see if tonally they're kind of coming together in the way that I want them to. Is it matching? Is it complementing what we have working? So that is a submix. It's fairly easy to create. Let me show you a couple quick things that could throw you off with this. Uh, but before I do, I wanna give you something. If you are struggling to get a mix that sounds great to you, it's not because you don't have the tools that you need, it's because you don't have a system that you're following. So I wanna give you something to help with that. I put together a six step checklist that just walks through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them wherever it is that you're making music. This song that I mixed, I followed that process. Every song that I mix, I follow that process, whether it's rock or rap or country or indie folk or whatever it is, follow the same process for that. It's gonna work for you because it's the fundamentals that all mix engineers are implementing in an easy to follow way. It's completely free from the description below. It's really gonna help you out, so be sure to pick it up. But let's go ahead and look at a couple little issues that you could be running into here with uh, setting up a submix. So first and foremost, one thing that I actually did and have done on a lot of mixes is if, if I create a new bus, so if I want to send off to a new reverb or something, let's say I just want to send uh, these vocals here off to a new reverb. I'm just going to go to bus one here. My buses are all weird in this track. It's just collaboration with other artists and stuff. Now, this reverb that we just created showed up here, Aux 2, but it defaults to going to the stereo out. So you need to be sure any new buses that you set up, you set up to go to your submix. One more thing to check. And then the other thing that you could run into is if you create a new track. So I'll just add a track here, just create an audio track. And this new track, if we now look at it over in this view, again, it's also gonna go to that stereo out. So we wanna be sure to change that, and a quick way to check this, just to make sure, is let's just copy some audio down onto this track here real quick. So if this is down on this track, a quick way to tell if your submix is working uh, and you haven't left anything out is to mute it. So if I were to play this right now, and I mute the submix, I'm still hearing these vocals right here because they're not routed. If we go back to that track, audio one, it's routed the stereo out. So that's just an indicator. That's the way I've caught a lot of my vocal effects being routed wrong is because I just mute check the submix and just shows me, oh, something is still going to that uh, main stereo out and not hitting that submix first. And that's important because if you're doing any sort of dynamic control or tonal control, you might just be throwing things off a little bit. It's not the end of the world. I've probably released mixes where I didn't catch something like that and it didn't ruin anything, but it's just helpful to catch. So one more thing to be aware of when you're setting something like this up. Okay, now before you go, be sure to grab the six step checklist to a pro mix from link in the description below. As I said, it's completely free and it's really gonna help you out. And if you've been following this channel for a while, you may notice I'm using a new mic right now. This is a mic that Samson sent me and I think it's really a great microphone and I'm thinking about doing a review on it because I think it could actually be really cool for instruments and recording vocals as well. If you're curious about seeing a review on this microphone, it's at a great price point and I think it sounds really good. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd be interested in. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing at a time.